almost everyone that is in the Western world is in a tradition in which the calling comes through a community which is perceived as representing the voice of God, usually based in texts, ancient texts. Amos was a herdsman and he got a call. There's usually picturing that whatever they're doing, their life is interrupted. They're surprised by what happens there. That's the classic concept of it, but not everybody gets that direct sense. I have dealt a lot with ministry students, and I always ask them, how did you get your call? Well, I went to summer camp and this happened, or I dealt with the kids, or I did an overseas service project, and it gradually dawned on me. And my own word for that is, I think you'll get your calling in the modern world through billions of particulars. Uh, you, you get nudged, you have disappointment, you have a recovery, etc. Uh, but there's been a constant, on the one hand, broadening of the concept of the call. On the other hand, there are more reasons to question it. I don't think anybody can enter ministry today without an awareness of all that's against you. The material culture, the pop culture, and so on, and you're trying to attract the ears of kids. Uh, will they ever be a part of it? Um, you uh, counsel marriages and they fall apart and maybe it creates tension in your own marriage. There are a lot of things like that. What sustains you though are the millions of little signals you get. Every day you have some doubts. In our tradition, doubt is seen as the flame that helps produce faith. If you've never had doubts, you don't have faith. If the voice doesn't keep coming, if you get a rough bump, um, if you foresee hazards that you haven't foreseen, uh, that may slow you down from the sense that God is calling you. And that's a very creative thing because I don't think you could sustain 40, 50, 60 years of ministry if you have a sense that I have to invent it every day, I have to make it up on my own. You could transform it a thousand ways, but way behind it all, the calling is God. In our tradition, we have the morning and evening prayer, which every minister may say too. In the morning, you make the sign of the cross, to remember your baptism, which means you're forgiven, and all your messing up you did in the call yesterday is gone, forgotten. God forgot, why should you remember? You say a little prayer, maybe you read a scripture, and then it says, and now you go to your work cheerfully. You don't always feel like it, you get depressed. At night, you look back on the day, and tomorrow you're worried, no, you have that little prayer again, and now you go to your sleep quickly and cheerfully. Well. If you really have a parishioner or a synagogue uh, member fighting you, it's hard to be cheerful, it's hard to go to sleep. But these rituals that reaffirm your calling, I think, help you know calling is dealt out a day at a time. You're not supposed to be worried about tomorrow, you're not supposed to have guilt for yesterday. You naturally will, but through the calling, you have the sense that however rough things get, sorrow is of the night, but joy comes in the morning. <laughs>